Sean, coming to you, uh, let me ask you, what keeps you up at night? Uh, you are the chief security officer for this uh, company. Uh, so tell us, what keeps you up at week? Uh, look, I, I think the biggest thing is more, let's not repeat the same mistakes. Uh, the concern that I probably always have is, we always keep on thinking about security as this is the way that we, with security, we always think about this is the way that it's always been, so let's keep on focusing on looking at that review mirror. And I think that's what probably keeps you up at night, that we're just going to keep on repeating, hopefully not the same mistakes that we've gone through in the past. Uh, you know, the threat has exponentially grown. I think we can all agree with that one. Uh, businesses are still challenged with the lack of understanding and awareness. I think that's work that's gotten better, but there's a lot more work that needs to be done. But we still live in a world where every time there is a brand new security challenge, we have a tendency to go out to market and buy a brand new product. So I'd kind of say there's an element of incrementalism in the market where we just constantly keep on layering all these different types of technologies. I think the smarter approach is having that architectural view of the world of how are we going to try and solve tomorrow's problems. If you think about digital transformation, digital economies, we're thinking about a brand new way or a brand new route to market. How do I actually de-risk that? And we should be asking ourselves that question all the time uh, because everyone has a role to play, as Manish said. But I think at the same time, from a technology standpoint, we should be thinking about how do we get some scale and leverage? Going off and buying 35 different solutions to try and solve that problem, I don't think ever worked, and I don't think it will ever work in the future. If we say that cloud is going to be the new paradigm that we're going to see more and more workloads going towards, let's not go through that same challenge that we experienced back in, let's call it the enterprise IT environment. How do we get some scale and efficiencies? Yeah, the approach that we took 12 years ago when we came out with our first solution to focus on the network security problem was to look at how do we start to consume a lot of these different components into a platform that's natively integrated that can actually be smarter about dealing with the threat rather than you going out and buying five disparate security solutions that were never designed to talk together. So going back to the original question, what keeps me up at night? It's more, I don't want people to keep on doing the same thing. You know, the mantra should be do different because the status quo didn't work for us. Um, so let me follow up again, Sean. Um, I was told, and I don't know the intricacies of this, but I'm given to believe that the browsers that are now being put out there, you know, Firefox and all these guys, are seeking to embed and hard code routing over the internet into the browser. So that uh, if you want to use your browser and it's hard-coded, then your routing is no longer in the hands of your operators, right? And when the good government comes to us and says, please shut down this URL, you know, <laughs> you're finished, right? Because the control of this has already gone outside of your control, right? It's there. Is this, is this something that government should worry about in terms of saying, look, you have a legitimate interest in terms of protecting your boundaries, your cyber boundaries, but here you have a system with you go into the internet and you can't control the routing from there. Is that, is this something that is of a concern? Yeah, look, absolutely. I think the biggest challenge has been more, uh, pretty much every, every network in India today, whether it's in the public or private sector, probably has about 60% of its traffic as encrypted. So if you talk about putting something in the browser, what they're basically trying to say is, how do I now encrypt my data so someone else can't see that? I think this is where the necessity is that we need to be able to inspect a lot of that traffic. The attackers know this and will launch their attacks in encrypted channels. So if you've got technology in your environment right now as an organization and you're not inspecting encrypted traffic, you're effectively blind to probably two thirds of that traffic. That means the investment you've made in your technologies pretty much is going to waste. So if you really want to try and get ahead of the curve, whether it's government trying to do its law enforcement part or organizations trying to work out how do they protect what's material to them, we have to be able to inspect this. And that's only going to increase as we keep on moving forward as well. Sean, how about what do you think about in terms of IoT coming on in a big measure? Uh, what do you see uh, from your perspective uh, in terms of security? I think the, it's, it's not a case of IoT is coming. I think it's already here and has been here for a long time. Uh, you know, um, I no doubt I'm sure Manish could give comments around the amount of devices that are probably connected to his network alone. So I think that the challenge is more around every organization should start to really understand one, what are these devices that are on their network, go through some form of security assurance. Am I buying the least cost non-compliant device and simply putting it on there because it was cheap? Or am I actually checking to see 
is there a way that it could securely be updated because vulnerabilities occur all the time. So what I need to have the visibility, you know, I need to be able to identify all these devices on my network. I need to be able to then go through a process of finding out what types of devices are they, are there any risks or exposures that are there, not only today, but sometime in the future. But to try and solve that problem, I don't think it's a case of let's just deploy yet another box to my environment. I think we're going to move to this model where we can start to really consume all of this as a service. We're doing it in so many other facets inside our own organization. If you had to buy another box tomorrow to solve a particular challenge, I think we're doing something wrong. And that's where I'd say let's start to look at some sort of cloud delivered security service where possible to try and solve this. Because IoT is not going to be a case of roll an agent out and manage the device. It's going to be through the network. And from a telco standpoint, it's going to be absolutely pervasive that it's going to be running through their networks. As a corporate customer or an organization, it's incumbent on me to make sure that I'm actually making sure that I can identify those assets, protecting what's of value to me, but then also asking myself the questions of how's it protected? Who's got access to it? Where is it located? Could I get access to it if I really needed to? They're fundamental risk questions that are not products per se, but it's just you need to know what you're actually protecting. To Manisha's point, you know, don't try and solve the problem of every single thing needs to be protected. You'll fail. You know, don't boil the ocean because that's not going to work. But what's the most critical part to my environment? And if I need to have IoT devices on there, great. But segment it in such a way that you could say it's not going to cause a material impact to any other part of my environment. 